the question, eight another classic questions. Much of the polynomials and logs that always suggest get the wave function sorted. There's excellent marks for not a massive amount of work. And if you think of some of the working you're doing in differentiation and integration and factorizing all these things, this is very procedural. It's very good. Okay, so how do you know it's the wave function? The minute you see this, you're thinking wave function. So we're going to express this in this form. So the first thing we do is go to the front of our booklet and we write out this using our addition formulae, the sign, the, the cos a take away b. So hopefully your pen works better than my pen on the day of the exam. <laughs> Sorry, so cos x, cos alpha, and then cos we change the sign. So you get your expansion. Then I'm just going to move this and this to the front of my formula. And then I'm going to write my question below here. So I'm going to say 2 cos x take away sin x. So what does that mean? Well, look at this. I've got my sin x is lined up, so that's good. I've got the cos x is lined up, so that's good. Um, and here I've got 2 lining up with k cos alpha. So I know that k cos alpha has to be equal to 2. Yeah, if that line there is to equal this line here, this is going to be 2. Now, this bit doesn't quite match up, does it? Now, I've got negative, it's obviously negative 1 sine x. But look at that, the, the signs aren't matching. What I would do here is to get them to match up, I would say, well, if I add on a negative, that's the same as a takeaway, isn't it? So now my adds match up, and that means that k sine alpha is going to be equal to negative 1. So I can see that k sine alpha is equal to negative 1. So however you want to do it, it's up to you. I'm just going to make sure that's a bit neater in here. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. So they match up, yeah. We're going to say adding on negative 1. Yeah, just to be sure it's really, really neat. So they match up. And these match up. So how, how you want to do it, it's up to you, but the point is everything should match up. So at this point, you could have said that, well, k sine alpha is going to have to equal negative 1. You know, however you want to play, I like to get these signs the same, so then I know this is a negative. You know, it's whatever, whatever works for you. If you're seeing that this is a positive and a negative, you're saying, well, if I put that in as a negative, that will go as a negative, whatever, whatever works for you, okay? Um, and at this point, I can then say, well, that means that tan alpha is sine over cos, so that's going to be negative 1 over 2. And then I can say, okay, well, alpha then is going to be tan inverse of positive 1 half. Don't forget, you would never put in a negative in at that point, always a positive. So that's going to come out as 26.6 degrees. And I'll do my um, cast diagram. And say, okay, well, sine was negative, so sine negative is going to go in here. Cos is positive, so that's here. And tan was negative, so tan would be negative here and here. So it's the fourth quadrant that I'm after. So my alpha is going to be 360, take away 26.6. So that's going to give me 333.4 degrees. So that's me worked out alpha. Very good. And the other thing I can work out is k. So I'll say that k is negative 1 squared plus 2 squared whole square root. There's an identity that basically means if you square, you know, we know sine squared and cos squared gives you 1. Basically, if you square this and square this, add them together, you get k squared. So then if I move this square over here and get the root, I just like to imagine it's a bit like Pythagoras. It looks exactly the same, doesn't it? Squared, squared, square root. So k is equal to root 5. And now I can write that out in the form they suggested as the wave function. So I can say that's root 5, which is my k, 
cos x333.4 degrees. Take away. Yeah. So quite a nice little um, set of marks. You're getting your mark for your expansion. You're going to mark for this. You're going to mark for working out k. And then a mark for your final um, degrees. So really good little question there. It did take us a bit of time to do though, but it's not bad. Find the minimum value of this. Okay, so for part B here, let's think. I've just worked out that 2 cos x take away sine x. I worked out that can be rewritten as root 5 cos root 5 cos x take away 333.4. Three, three, three That's what I just did there. Now they're saying what's the minimum value of 6 cos x take away 3 sine x. Well, how do you get from here to here? You're multiplying by 2, aren't you? So I have to do the same on this side. So I'll just over a little bit. I would have to take my wave function and times it by 2. So I'll end up with 2 root 5 cos x take away 333.4. So the maximum and the minimum value are just going to be 2 root 5 and negative 2 root 5. Yeah, happy with that? I'm not happy with that because <laughs> times in by 3. What am I doing? What am I doing? It's getting late. Getting late. Times in by 3. Oh, so close. Just when I checked it, I thought, wait a minute, this doesn't look like something I missed. My spidey senses were tingling. So that was a 3 root 5. Sorry, 3 root 5. Oh, hope you weren't shouting at the screen for too long there. So yeah, how do you get from 2 to 6? Times in by 3. How do you get from 1 to 3? Times in by 3, not times in by 2. And calculate the x value for which that occurs. So now what I have to do is solve my function. So I'll do question C. So I'm saying that I've got 3 root 5 cos x take away 333.4. And I want to know when is that equal to, and we're looking for the minimum value, aren't we? So when is that equal to negative 3 root 5? Well, divide both sides by 3 root 5. So I'm going to get cos x take away 333.4. That's going to end up with negative 1. So I'll do my inverse cos for negative 1. Now, you don't need to calculate it for that. Just picture it, yeah? So where is cos equal to negative 1? It's equal to negative 1 at 180 degrees, isn't it? So inverse cos of that is going to give me 180 degrees. And then rearrange, add on the 333. So I've got 180 plus 333.4. And that gives me 513. Point four degrees. Now we're almost there. 514 is over in this bit somewhere. I'm looking for the answer within 0 and 360. So I then have to take away 360 just to get me in the right range. And that's going to give me 153.4 degrees. So nice little question there. Only um, two marks in the end because really all you're doing is solving this. You know, that's, you should not have to do that. But this bit here really is not five stuff. You know, when is cos negative 1? 180, add that on. Make sure you're in the right range. So, maybe a bit fidgety, but in terms of pure technical content, not wildly tricky, actually. So, yeah, um, that's a very standard wave function question. And look at that. You've got yourself seven beautiful marks for very procedural work. So, I'll definitely, um, you know, look up, look up that. Make sure you're happy. And, yeah, I hope that, hope that helps.